Shalom. Yes. How are you doing, Sharif sir? I am well. God's mercy, Sharif sir. Yes, uh, I think uh, we can have a quick discussion on two things. Yes. One is with regards to that uh, tabloid which published okay. uh, about uh, Muslims and uh, calling them bad, of bad apples, yeah. bad apples, and yeah. also calling for a genocide. And second yeah. thing is about uh, the riots that took place last night at uh, Padranipura. So yeah. let's yeah. finish up these two discussions quickly. Uh, starting with the uh, the uh, tabloid which published about uh, hatred okay. for Muslims. Okay, okay. Because Padranipura, some people had gone there for this uh, sanitization, no? Yeah, yeah. When uh, they they had been there, the health department people had been there to take them for quarantine. So okay. out of the, the 50, people revolted. Yeah, yeah. Out of the fifty members who were identified, twenty members had cooperated, according to uh, Mujahid Pasha. He says about twenty yeah. members had cooperated. Other thirty members were also on their way. But uh, hmm. some of the people who are not identified yet, they have revolted badly, and okay. they have gone and uh, you know dismantling all the barricades and breaking oh, few oh, things. Oh, and oh, it was a very oh, bad scene out there. Since last okay. night, uh, there's a big discussion, and a lot of people, politicians, are expressing their thoughts. Yes. So, so, so if, we t- if we start with uh, this Padranipura itself, I can say whatever, whatever. Yeah, whatever. we can we can sense a uh, kind of uh, panic. Uh, amongst the community, where they are not able to identify who is their well-wisher and who is their, mm, yes. you know, uh, they are yes, the ones yes. who are going to be antagonists. So, how, how do you think this community can be educated? Take care, sir. You start off, uh, uh, Sheikh sir. I'm ready. Yeah. Abhi jo hai, aise hal mein ham kaise ham aage leke ja sakte hain? Isme kaise ham? Yeah. The only hope is that you know the community is. Uh, I always believe that has uh, been a flaw. in the yeah. leadership of the community and the community's response to political crises has been very poor mm. they are not able to uh, distinguish between average leaders and visionary leaders today mm. the need of the hour is leaders who have got a broad uh, foresight mm. a long foresight who can guide them to, uh, towards the uh, right path where the muslim community can integrate with the mainstream mm. see that is the advantage which uh, the right hindu fringe has taken uh, taken advantage of Mm-hmm. Uh, even in this case, in Padanpura case, if the leaders had taken initiative mm-hmm. and educated the people, and the ulumas, the ulumas are doing what they can do. But mm-hmm. I think I personally feel they should have been a little more pro- proactive. Mm-hmm. And even the BBMP health officers, when they entered that area, mm-hmm. they were fully aware that it was a, it was predominantly a Muslim area. Mm-hmm. They should have got in touch with the local uh, Muslim, uh, religious leaders and the political leaders, mm-hmm. and then. Um, uh, They should have done what they had gone there to do. Right, right. I think that is also something they must have. You know, I think the process has to be rectified. Primarily, definitely, uh, the methodology mm-hmm. of uh, getting into such localities has to be uh, discussed further. And yeah. uh, secondly, I think uh, there should be a lot of awareness which is missing greatly. <laughs> what happens is when these government offices that enter a particular area, any area, mm. there is a jackboot kind of an approach. Mm-hmm. they are very they, they look very aggressive um you know and very intimidating mm mm-hmm. uh, and like you said there is already panic running through the uh, spine of the community mm-hmm. because of so many reasons you know mm-hmm. whatever has happened since this government has come to power and this government has done nothing to assuage that feeling of panic so when you say this government you are talking about central government not the state modi government modi government modi government but but yes, europa so is doing fairly a good job isn't it Ed- Edurappa is an exception uh, to this bunch of uh, you know right fringe. Mm-hmm. Um, last time when he he was talking to some media channel, he openly openly said that uh, Muslims are not like that. You know, I'm not yeah. going to I'm going to take action against anybody who is going to uh, who is intimidating them or scaring them. Right. I think that was all welcomed by everybody. Right, right, right. Yes. Now, what do you have to say about that uh, tabloid which published uh, you know in a very derogatory manner, uh, depicting yes. the Muslims as bad apples and calling for uh, getting rid of them from the society what is that the is derog- taken yeah derogatory is a euphemism uh, star of uh, mysore is it the name yeah, of the tabloid yeah, star, star of mysore it is a evening tabloid in mysore it's a very popular tabloid in uh, three or four districts that is um, uh, chamnagar mysore mandya okay the surrounding areas a lot of people read it mm-hmm. that uh, that uh, particular newspaper is owned by two people ganapati and i think one more gentleman is gowda and one of them is a lawyer too Mm-hmm. it is extremely gross irresponsibility on their part to publish mm-hmm. such an article which calls for extermination of muslims it is nothing short of a genocide 
I mean, that's a crime, uh, open crime, is it? At 153A. It, it is the most heinous uh, national and international crime because the UN uh, 1948 uh, conventions clearly say that if uh, any government or any entity calls for extermination of a particular race, religion, or any particular group, yeah. or even gives them men mental to forget about bodily harm, mm -hmm. that is one thing. Even if there is a hint of mental trauma, it mm. is deemed as genocide. Right, right. And right. Uh, and and what this paper has done in, in its April sixth uh, uh, editorial, mm. it has openly incited the people mm. to uh, uh, to get rid to get to I'm quoting them to get rid of uh, Muslims. This is mm. an open call for genocide. That is mm. also covered under UN conventions of 1948. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is a case which is extremely fit uh, to be tried by Indian courts and the um, International Court of Justice. What they have done is unforgivable. It's an act of national treason mm -hmm. that you are actually calling for the extermination of 18 percent of its citizens. Right, 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 right. Yeah, I think uh, the, the riots are part of the reactions to such kind of uh, hate mongering articles and uh, WhatsApp messages, which are no bursting out every second. Don't you feel so? There is a syndicate. There is a syndicate of criminal journalists. Mm -hmm. Led by certain uh, national media and even the you know social media group, mm -hmm. which, which are paid, which are guided or uh, rather misguided by the uh, powers that be. Mm -hmm. This syndicate, this mafia journalism, has become rampant in India. Right. This this people, all the journalists who mm -hmm. who are um, uh, witch hunting a particular community, the tomorrow's India will remember them as rogues who try to divide India. Right. They will be uh, in the same pantheon as God says as Gulwal Kurt and so many other traitors who did a huge disservice to the cause of a united and a plural India. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, Sharia Saab, I yes. want to bring out one uh, thing that I came across in Tamil Nadu. Uh, mm -hmm. You know that uh, about 1,000 people are identified in connection with COVID-19 uh, positive cases from amongst the yes. Tablighi Jamaat. And yes. uh, the, a lot of people were also sharing their uh, videos across the social media and creating more panic. At that point yeah. in time, the local ulama of Tamil Nadu, they came together. They gave yeah. a number to which anybody having any grievance with regards to the uh, formalities or uh, the process of the uh, government uh, health department, they can file yeah. a complaint with the ulama who are having a department to cater to the needs. So thereby, yeah. what happened, the whole thing got streamlined. I think it's about mm -hmm. time that uh, the ulama and the leaders of uh, Tamil, I mean, in Karnataka as well, they have yeah. a certain helpline and a process to deal with the grievances rather than taking up onto the streets. What do you have to say yeah. about that? See, the, the sad part of uh, uh, the Muslims in India is that they're hopelessly divided. Mm. They have various, uh, they come under various organizations. Mm. I wish we had a central leadership, uh, something like Muslim Personal Law Board, which I think is uh, frighteningly quiet now in this crisis. There is not a word from them. Mm. It's part of uh, Nizamuddin Markaz. I, mm. I did not hear anything uh, coming out from their, um, uh, you know, offices. Mm. Uh, the uh, reaction, you know, because that is one body th that is looked up to by majority of the Muslims. During instant civil talaq and other such I issues, they were at the forefront. Mm -hmm. Now, when Nizamuddin has happened, I don't know why they are, they're, they're quiet, uh, they're qui their quietness is deafening to me. Their silence absolutely, is deafening absolutely. to me. Absolutely, you just nailed it. I mean, yes. I mean, this is like, it is really uh, unfortunate to see that very the unfortunate leaders, leaders are so yeah. quiet, yeah. Yeah, it's very, very sad and very tragic. I don't know where these people are hiding. They should come out of their uh, homes. Yeah, I, I think that the failure of leadership is also very much evident, and yes, uh, people yes. are uh, really, uh, uh, really worried about uh, the next moment. What I mean, I mean, uh, Sheikh Saab, when both of us are talking, both of us realize the enormity of the issue. Mm. Now here is the pandemic that is threatening the world, and here we are in India. Uh, uh, Muslims, citizens uh, of this great country, who are part of uh, this country since you know hundreds and thousands of years we are being victimized and the so-called body which comes with with the chest thumping uh, uh, you know arrogance on the national television and claims to represent the muslims in issues like instant temple talaq ayodhya mm -hmm. where are they now this is the time when they should have stood up for nizam uh, nizamuddin markas because yeah. the, the issue that happened in nizamuddin markas was at best can be dis described as reckless it was not wanton it was not never deliberate Mm -hmm. They did not violate any law because I and you both of us know that when this was happening, there were clear 
communicates from the government of, of India and Delhi that this is not a health emergency. The the yeah. health secretary, Mr. Lava, had made it very clear. Right. Now, uh, the best, the the most you can uh, accuse them of is being reckless. Yeah, that is uh, that is one thing. But to make the, the disproportionate mispropaganda that was given uh, to this particular organization, ignoring what happened in various other places of worship, right? The Jamaat, like you know, Gomutra Jamaat and what Yogi Adityanath did in Ayodhya, the Shilhaniya which he did, and you know, with all the respects to all the religions, mm -hmm. they were completely swept under the carpet. And this case of Star of Mysore, mm. this should have been the case on the national, uh, you know. Uh, media, yeah, not a word about it. Not a word about it. Not a word uh, about it. Yeah. Anywhere, I know. Actually, the paper calls for killing, massacre mm -hmm. of Muslims, and uh, you know the national media is. I mean, you can imagine there is not a word about it in the national media. Right, uh, Baskar Rao, the commissioner of uh, you know Bangalore, seems to be very positive in uh, you know meeting the members from various communities, especially with the Muslims as well. He has been yeah. showing some positive gestures across. Why don't we take it up to him? See, I uh, I have known Mr. Bhaskar Rao since uh, his college days. I was a junior for two years. My okay. brother studied with him in National College. He's a wonderful man. Right. He's very secular in his outlook, extremely amenable, amicable. Um, uh, you know, it's very lucky that Bangalore has a commissioner like him during this crisis. Right. And uh, yes, it should be taken up. This star of Mysore should be taken up once this lockdown is over or even during the lockdown. Mm -hmm. We should file a case um, against the paper. In spite of, they had tendered an apology uh, April 10, but that apology was disingenuous. It was very mild and, uh, uh, you know, it clearly showed that they were completely um, indifferent to the the, the people, uh, the citizens of uh, India, the Muslim citizens of India. Mm -hmm. So once this lockdown is over, we should take up this uh, Sudhis uh, paper. And uh, what I'm surprised is, Sheikh Saab, there mm -hmm. is something called as judicial activism in India. Mm -hmm. You must have seen. Mm. In so many cases, Ayudhya, Rinsal, yeah. Salah, judiciary was seen to be very active, which was good in many cases and not in some few cases. Right. But this time, this judiciary has not taken cognizance of uh, this, uh, what happened uh, uh, you know, in the editorials of uh, Star of Mysore. Mm -hmm. They should have immediately, immediately taken Sumo to cognizance. Mm -hmm. And the Press Council of India should, should have banned this paper. It is a statutory body. I think it's about time that we shared it across to the mainstream, yes, yes, yes. Uh, so that people are aware of it and someone from there, you might find a Samaritan just coming across and doing the job of uh, following yes. through legal process. I one think, of uh, the, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. One of the greatest constitutionalists of India, who is the living legend, uh, Professor Mustafa Faizan, he highlighted this uh, in his uh, web series. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, he has made uh, everything very clear. He has clearly explained uh, this issue of Star of Mysore. And he is considered to be one of the one of the greatest uh, um, authority on the constitution of India. Mm -hmm. So all these things are there for us, you know, as material to file a case against uh, this um, uh, hate mongering newspaper. Okay, I think we can close down this uh, discussion with one uh, word to the audience, saying that uh, we must uh, follow up the cases through legal process so that uh, we can find uh, a logical end uh, towards our endeavor. What do you have to say about yeah. that? Yes, definitely. And I, I request leaders like you and uh, who are there active politically, um, even religiously, to to uh, to make an effort to bring all the Jamaats under one rubric. True, true. So true. that, you know, there is a concerted response to such crisis. And also, yeah. um, I would like to know what the Muslim personal law body is doing, whether it is sleeping or it's dead. It's yeah. for me, it's very difficult to say. I'm very disappointed with this that organization, that yeah. body. Yeah, I think uh, with that, we'll uh, end the discussion. Thanks, uh, Sharif. Yes. Thank, thank you very you, much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.